Hello and welcome to the Minnesota Miracle and all things Mighty Duck podcast. I'm your host Maggie Hers, and today I'm joined with a very special guest, Marguerite Moreau, aka Connie Moreau from the Mighty Ducks trilogy. <laughs> Thank you so much for being with me. Sure. <laughs> it's such an honor to get to interview you today. Um, how are you doing? I'm good. I'm really good today. Thanks for asking. How are you? Of course. I'm great. I'm ecstatic. I am so excited to ask you some questions about the films. They're my favorite movies of all time. I'm a, I'm a huge fan. <laughs> um, so when I was writing down my questions, I talked to some of my Mighty Duck friends that I made through social media. Um, and we came up with some like general questions just to start with, just some like, I don't know, just out of like curiosity. Um, so the first question we have is, have you ever thought about giving Connie a birthday or something along those lines to make her more personal? Oh, that's so nice. We should, let's do it now. Mm -hmm. Let's do it now. What kind of, <laughs> what sign do you think she is? <laughs> I was thinking about that. Um, I, I don't know too much about zodiac signs. Oh, me I, either. I, I should have done some research before. Me too. <laughs> that was my um, way of deflecting. Like, I just brought up something I don't know much about. <laughs> I feel like she would have a birthday within the school year so she could have a, mm -hmm. you know, a fun party, whether it's like, mm -hmm. you know, at the skating rink with the pizza party or the roller mm -hmm. rink with the pizza party. Sure. Like, definitely mm -hmm. she would include like school friends. Like she would be a mm -hmm. social birthday person rather than yeah. like a, yeah. Summer birthday. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Um, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> you know, I think her parents would just probably get a cake. It wouldn't be too fancy. <laughs> mm -hmm. When I was thinking about this, I was like, she strikes me as like a, an April or May birthday for some reason. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. Um, but then I was also thinking like, well, I don't know the zodiac sign. So I don't know which. April or May is Taurus because that's my birthday. Oh, okay. She's then maybe maybe just she's the coming same as off you. of me in a natural <laughs> she way. Is, she is. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe she has the same birthday as you. Yeah. Maybe, maybe. she has the last name. Why yeah. not? There yeah. Go. There we go. <laughs> um, another like curiosity question someone had was Do Connie and Guy's other two children have names, or have you like thought about their names? Yeah, when I was, um, I think he, she has a, two boys and a girl. And uh, I've never talked to Garrett about about the names. That's funny. We were both like, we really named our kid and <laughs> Gordon. And they were like, how would we really do it? And we decided that we said that, but Gordon was a middle name. It was not like mm -hmm. a name. So that's what we decided. But <laughs> definitely we did it, which is still like legit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm taking votes though. I think that could be a fun fan thing. To oh, I think that'd be fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For sure. that. <laughs> um, and then my last like general question is something that's confusing me personally is Connie and Guy's relationship in D3. Were they like broken up at that point? And if they were, when do you think oh. they got like back together and married? <laughs> oh yeah. I think that D3 was really, um, like like the relationship that needed to break up so the kids can grow, mm -hmm. but they didn't know how to do it. So they were <laughs> not, did not have a healthy relationship. <laughs> so college probably allowed them to call it, right? So they were mm -hmm. like, we're good. We go our separate ways. But I think that, um, you know, I imagine always that they like ran into each other with work or something, that it wasn't like finding each other on Facebook, but that they... They came into contact with each other fully realized as adults and were like oh, great mm -hmm. great and done like they were always sweet on each other from mm -hmm. the like the sweetness of their souls mm -hmm. that's too sweet you know when when game changers came out i was like i hope like the ducks come back and i really hope to see connie and Guy together and thank god we did <laughs> Um, my next so question my next question actually is about um game changers um we see the ducks come back um even the ducks who weren't present like everyone was given a job description um or just a small description of their present day lives in an article um and your character connie moreau is of course married to Guy germain and is a state senator with three kids um i want to know if you had an influence on her life or if you were just like given that description 
I think definitely, uh, given the fact that the writer has always kind of kept tabs on all of us and a lot of our, I feel a lot of our jobs have come out of what he's experienced of us, either just by knowing us or watching us on social media or whatnot. And I'm very political and I'm very involved in my community. And I was always like trying to get people to, you know, do this or that and and really try to engage uh, with each other like to connect to the community we were in, whether it was Minneapolis, like I still have friends in Minneapolis from when we shot there or um, getting out the vote when I, you know, during presidential elections. So I think he took my natural interest and was like, let's go with that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and so like sweet. Garrett became a father <laughs> while he was in mm-hmm. school, um, getting his master's because he's a director. So, you know, I think that that was like natural that he's the father of a couple of kids himself and mm-hmm. Yeah, and I have one, so his two, my one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. I didn't, I didn't know that. That it was kind of like based off of, I guess, all of your lives, really. Well, I think our characters, when we were younger, some of them anyway, were developed. Some of us more ancillary kid characters were developed a little bit more as they got to know us and knew our strengths, because we weren't like the strongest actors. I'll just speak for me personally, <laughs> but. But they're like, okay, she leans into this really nicely. She's, you know, and then of course, like, I, I'm sure I was just getting a little sick of the boys by death. <laughs> it was like, ah, we're going to get away. It's <laughs> very <laughs> So I think it, it stays true to the characters in that too, you know, mm-hmm. how they kind of learned or made the characters. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of being around, you know, all those boys, um, I hope you know how much it means to me and like the entire female fan base seeing you like kicking ass and taking names in a male dominated sport. Um, Cause there really was only two girls on the team at, at, the, at a time. Um, so what does it mean to you being like the big female figure in these movies? So I just think it, it shouldn't surprise me but it still does cause I didn't consciously think of it that way I was really treated as a part of the team and then the production the people who were in charge of us like the directors and producers treated us like a real hockey team and there was like I mean you could go change in the other room but like you're getting ready in your hockey gear you were sweaty together you were so I think that now learning about that especially because I didn't play sports in high school Um, I tried a little bit when I was younger, but then I started acting and, you know, you miss two practices and they're like, you're not really. Mm -hmm. So, so it wasn't like on my radar, you know, in in that experience and um, having learned later as I meet people, it means so much to me, but I think it's probably better as a kid, me not knowing Mm -hmm. that. (laughs) I just, I just really appreciate that the writers had the, they made her just be like all the other kids mm-hmm. instead of like a, the token girl. Yeah. Um, so, that, you know, that she got in there and was just, these are the dudes in my, in my <laughs> league. Type of thing. Mm-hmm. So I, it means a lot. I, I don't mean <laughs> to say that. I, I'm just blushing because I, <laughs> I'm just like a visual representation of something that, that needed to happen. And I'm glad it did. Mm-hmm. Like, I think my double went on to be on the first national team that went to the Olympics. That's amazing. Awesome. Like the first girls hockey in the Olympics. Mm-hmm. So I just said chills with myself. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um, my next question is could you tell me about any of your most memorable memorable deleted scenes or set stories in general? Uh, for example, just today I saw a scene from D2 where Connie and Guy go to kiss each other and they bump helmets. Um, which wasn't in the movie. Someone somehow found that scene just today, which was so funny. Um, but I thought it was the cutest thing ever. But I would just love God, to hear. Send me the link. I want to see you. that. Of course. I think um, the most interesting for me was I had never done a movie before, and so they Connie has in, this incredible wardrobe. She's all about the mix match prints. She's way ahead of her time. She doesn't have just like twelve whole docs. She has fourteen whole docs. Like. <laughs> Her beret with her, you know, varsity jacket that's like purple suede. I mean, she was always challenging me as a girl to, you know, live your best life and uh, delight yourself. My mom was pretty strict with what I could wear. 
she's like classic margarita and I was always like <laughs> look at my shirt right now it's white it's boring you know um and so I I me getting to play her meant the world because this is what they put me in and I was never allowed to wear stuff like this but I also had never encountered six months of a craft service table which is like a snack table at at work that has everything you'd ever want to eat, like every snack in the aisle at the grocery store that kids want. And so the minute they would yell cut, we would make a beeline for the snack table because, you know, kids need to eat snacks like every 2.5 seconds. Mm -hmm. And then by for like a quarter of the way through, the movie, I split my pants. <laughs> I too many snacks. <laughs> And I didn't know it for a long time because I was wearing breezers all the time. But that was a real humbling moment, but also like, oh, you've got to laugh. And then they switched our snacks, not just because of me, but because all the younger kids were eating like M&Ms 24-7, <laughs> crazy. That the snack table was a bowl of pretzels and some water and some lemonade. We got put on <laughs> snack probation, <laughs> which was great. And there was like a duck bus. So the duck bus showed up every morning to like pick all the kids up to go to work <laughs> and to go to set. And so that thing smelled all the time. Our <laughs> equipment and it was great. We were like a little team. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had a coach that wouldn't like, if, if you were, he would find out, like I had just moved from one city to another and one was a little fancier <laughs> and one was a little like, you know, not as cool of a place mm -hmm. to live. And so he wouldn't call me the fancy place until I earned it each day. <laughs> he would use the other place as like a dig, like, come on. So he, he really kind of made it personal and like tried to find the thing to egg us on, um, which was super fun. That's yeah, and so I was cute. like, a, yeah, it was a little bit of like a, a little bit of a bully at first, <laughs> not in a mean, like, words or anything, but I had a little quicker balance before the boys on the first movie. So we'd learn how to skate first and then we'd shoot the movie. But I was really bad at hand-eye coordination. So I get frustrated and I'd sometimes like, I feel so bad about this, but I would stick my dick in their skates and like pull them down. And they would get so mad and I'd be like, what? Like, I didn't do anything? Like, such a B-I-T-C-H. And one, uh, Averman, what's his name? Matt Doherty called me a bitch and I was like, I got so on my high horse. I will never forget it. I'm such a little liar. And like, we laugh about that to this day. Marguerite and her like, I didn't do anything right. You fully did. But they got their, they got their comeuppance. As I became like more honest of a player, uh, they became taller. And so by the third movie, they were six feet tall and I was still five two. And uh, I kind of tried to stay out of their radar because they were like, I'm coming for you now. <laughs> I Thank learned you a for lot. Sharing. Um, yeah, so you know, I didn't have like big brothers. I had little brothers and they were all from, like little brothers. But I was like, oh yeah, that's not a cool thing to do. So, you know, these were the people that I learned those things with. It was great. My next question, uh, did you ever imagine the Mighty Ducks being so popular nearly 30 years after its released release? <laughs> this is not not only in like game changers, but also like fan edits, merchandise, jerseys and event signings. Um, for example, I see kids on my own college campus wearing Mighty Duck jerseys and I often wear mine. So I just think it's like really amazing how people that weren't even born uh, at the time of the movie's release are like such big fans of the movies now. It just warms my heart. You know, <laughs> it meant so much to me as an experience I was having. The fact that you can make something that brings joy to other people is like the whole point of why I do what I do. Um, and for it to have longevity is, is I'm, I mean, especially in this time where we sometimes look back on older movies and we're like, mm, is that appropriate? It's nice that it is not that. And that also it makes Oh, fa families, right? Like, so your parents and your kids are happy, you know? Mm -hmm. It's nice to be able to share. Mm -hmm. And speaking of nearly 30 years, do you guys have anything special in mind for the 30th anniversary of the Mighty Ducks? I think there are some things planned. I've been told <laughs> to just be ready, but I don't know what they are yet. So mm -hmm. I always look forward to seeing the guys for sure, because we always 
it's good to go, gosh, what were you thinking back then? Like, you were nine. <laughs> I was 13. We were like not even talking. You know, you got you had your old social sphere. And to get to know some of the guys like um Justin, who plays Ken Wu, now we're adults. And we both can laugh like so hard about, he was like, oh, I just like followed you around. No idea. And I'm like, well, why didn't you come say? I'm not coming to daddy you. Like, what? You know, now I'm like following him around. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's nice to know people for this long. And, and there's like a trust there, even though you haven't seen them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys have planned. <laughs> mm -hmm. Um, I think, yeah, my last question is, is there anything that strikes you differently looking back at the Mighty Docs experience as an adult? It strikes me as what? Differently, like looking back. It strikes me differently, that's right. I knew you said something. <laughs> um, I think I always thought that I liked the first one more and now I realize I like the first <laughs> one. Like now I'm in a current love affair with the second movie. <laughs> Um, and I think that I didn't know, I always assumed that I'd know everyone my whole life, but I, I don't think I recognized that we'd be getting together because other people wanted to, to talk about the movies like we are talking now. And so I think that is a really special gift because when you make a movie, you're by yourself with the group of people and then you go away and then a year goes by and then you might see a couple of them, but then you all go back to your own houses. So like getting to meet people now with the internet, even with COVID like on, like we're doing now on Zoom, you're, you just had, like I said, I did not have any idea because there wasn't social media to immediately do a photo drop of like this week at work and you get to share with you like what there's jerseys mm -hmm. out and about like, it's so exciting to go mm -hmm. oh there are people that I can share my own excitement with or even cameo or uh signings stuff like that it really means a lot to meet people that had an experience and share that with them yeah thank you so much those are all of my questions um, this truly meant a lot to me. It's so nice to finally talk to you after messaging for however many weeks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you reached out. I'm just very happy to talk to you. Too. <laughs> Thank you. I, I messaged you on a whim and I was like, I don't even know if she'll see this. Uh, she's verified as so many followers. And then I got a reply and I was like, oh my God, this is insane. <laughs> So thank it you again. Out, and I'm glad it did. Absolutely. <laughs> my pleasure. Good luck with this. Thank you.